All right, so this lesson is something that applies to all programming languages, not only C. In the last lesson, I explained to you about signed and unsigned numbers. And in that lesson, I explained that the more bits that you have available for storing a value, the greater the value you can store. So for example, if you have three bits, you can't store any value greater than seven. If you have four bits, you can't store any value greater than 15, and so on. So let's talk about what happens when you have a set number of bits available for storage and you start counting. All right, so let's imagine we have three bits. We start at zero, then we add one. Now we have one, now we add another one, we have two, we add another one, and now we have three. Now take a look at what happens now. If all of the columns are full on the right, and you have to add one, what happens to the columns that are, that are full on the right? The answer is they're going to become zero on the very next addition. So we're going to go one, zero, zero, which makes four. Now, what I want you to see here is that if we were using only two bits and we start counting like this, once we get to three and we have filled up all possibilities of those two bits, the very next number we add is going to set those two bits to zero. In other words, once you have filled up all of the bits you have available with ones, so that if you're using two bits, it's one one. If you're using three bits, it's one one one. If you're using four bits, it's one 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 one, and so on. The very next number is going to set those ones to zeros. So when we have three and we add one, we now absolutely must have an extra column on the left because that column is going to become a one and the columns that used to be ones are going to become zeros. All right, so let's imagine that we have three bits available for storage and we start counting. So we start at zero and we work our way to seven. Now at this point, we have used every single possibility for those three bits. So if we have all three bits filled and we add one, the answer is eight. But if we are forced to stay within three bits because that is all we've allocated to store this number, then what we will actually see for our answer is this. We will see zero, zero, zero. So in other words, if you're limited to only three bits and you say one, one, one plus one, the answer you're going to get is zero, zero, zero because this one that we need in order to make the answer eight can't fit within three bits. So it will not be in the final answer. So I want to make sure you understand this. Anytime you have a set number of bits, you're limited to how big of a number you can store there. If you try to store a number bigger than what will fit, you'll only get the rightmost part of that answer that does fit. So if your answer is eight and you're limited to three bits, you're going to get just zero, zero, zero as your answer. So if you are limited to three bits of storage and you start counting from, let's say, six, then you would have six, add one, now you have seven, now you add one, and now you don't have eight because eight won't fit. 8 is 1, zero, zero, 0, and we're limited to 3 bits. So because you can't fit the 1, you go back to 0, and then you add 1 and you, you reach 1, and so on. So basically, you count to 7, then you go back to 0, count to 7 again, back to 0, and that's because you can't store any greater number than what will fit inside of 3 bits. So if you apply that same concept to four bits, then you would count to 15 and then go back to zero and so on. So every time you pass the highest possible number, 
you will go back to zero. Now this can create a problem because you might have a situation in your program where you are adding together two valid numbers and you get the wrong answer. So for example, let's suppose we are limited to storing numbers in three bits and we try to add four and six. Now notice that four can fit in three bits just fine and six can fit in three, by, uh, three bits just fine. Both of those numbers have no problem fitting inside of three bits, but the answer, which is 10, requires four bits. So if you had a program and you asked that program to add four and six, and you're limited to only three bits of storage, the result you would get would actually be two, which is wrong. All right, so what I've been describing is something called numeric overflow. Numeric overflow happens whenever you have a number or a value that is too large to be stored in the number of bits that you have allocated for storage. Now, this can happen very easily when you start working with large numbers and you don't allocate enough space for those large numbers. And when that happens, you can have a situation where you perform a mathematical operation on a number and you get the wrong answer simply because the right answer won't fit. Now there are a lot of ways to handle this situation and we'll go over that later but right now I want you to understand what an overflow is so that you can be prepared for it later.